What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos. Today we're going to be taking a sneak peek at the next iteration of GNOME version 3.16. GNOME 3.16 is set to be released on March 25th, which is little less than a week away. So I want to show you some of the most notable features I think are exciting for me from a user standpoint. So first and foremost, just to highlight uh, some changes in GNOME 3.16 that we may not be able to see visually. We've got GTK Plus support, various improvements for um, GTK Plus. We finally have support for OpenGL and the uh, new GL widget feature. We've got SSL for Broadway, which is the new GTK Plus HTML5 backend. We've got uh, no mutter improvements. We've got improvements to the high contrast theme, Foursquare integration and check-in support. Uh, for Facebook and Gnome apps. We've got overlay scroll bars are finally here for Gnome applications. Various, again, GTK Plus improvement. Um, we've got control tab, uh, tab switching of Windows in Gnome. Uh, some other proposed Gnome 316 um, features are going to be further ebook support with Gnome Document Viewer. Um, we've got some redesigning uh, with notifications here, which we're going to take a look at for Gnome Shell. Uh, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, of course, there's th literally thousands and thousands of um, code submissions that have gone into this particular iteration of GNOME um, from the development team and for, from uh, the community. So very excited for this next release from GNOME, and I believe it to be one of the best releases yet. So I've got GNOME 316 running here in Boxes, which is GNOME's virtualization application. And I have it set up this way so we can compare and contrast it to GNOME 3.14, which is the current stable version of GNOME. So the first thing I want to show you guys is the uh, theme. So if we look in GNOME, the current iteration, we see that the theme looks fairly consistent with this kind of semi-transparent black uh, with white. And, you know, I, I use... Uh, my desktop has a 27 inch LED monitor and you know, it, it's, it's legible and it looks all right. Um, however, I think the new iteration of the theme is much better. So you've got, a, you've got this kind of gray opaque menu system here. And I actually much prefer this um, to the current iteration. I think from a legibility standpoint, this is much, much nicer. It's easier on the eyes, it's much easier to see. And I use, a, again, a fairly large monitor. I can really see this coming into play um, using something like a, a laptop on a smaller form factor, this legibility being much easier on the eyes. I think it looks great. And we see it carried over here in the dash, in our workspaces. Um, so I really actually like the new uh, theme. I think, again, it's just easier on the eyes. It's nicer to see. So when we come into the application drawer, this is very much of what we've been used to in the current iteration of GNOME. Again, if we compare that here to the current app drawer, we see we got different pages and we have uh, different drawers here that we can group applications together. So our utilities are all grouped together, uh, so on and so forth. Again, that's the same here in GNOME 3.16. You can group your own applications together and make custom drawers using the GNOME software application that comes pre-installed with Fedora. So all of that's very much the same. You've got a tab down here for your all of your applications, also a tab here for your frequently used applications. Um, now, one of the things that's new specifically to Fedora and to GNOME is going to be uh, a security feature when you install the distro. You're going to be presented with a privacy uh, tab that's going to give you some privacy options so you can choose some of these things here automatically when you're setting up uh, the installation of Fedora again but your distro uh, your distro may vary so some of the other nice things and for me the most notable change from a user experience standpoint is notifications so as many of you know notifications have been handled down here in this bottom portion of your screen so if you drag your mouse down to the bottom here and apply enough quote, air quotes pressure, um, you have this notification area that pops up with a little settings, uh, little settings icon here uh, and some notifications. Um, 
you know, your desktop lifts up and here's where it is. I think notifications should be front and center. So personally, having them tucked away and hidden down here is not optimal. Um, I've read some criticisms on GNOME 316 as to why they're including them where they are now, which is going to be where the old calendar uh, option used to be. So as you can see, we've moved the calendar over here to the right and we have all your notifications here on the left. On the left. I'm going to be using libnotify to show you guys how these new notifications will be displayed. So if we open up terminal here, we see that uh, we've got a notification that's now appeared. Why I like it this way, it's front and center. A notification, you should be notified in a very efficient manner. So putting it in front of you, uh, literally front and center of whatever you're doing is where I think notifications should be. So if you want to access all of your notifications, you open up this uh, center option here, which is usually your uh, date and time and your calendar. On the right, your calendar. On the left, all your notifications. They'll appear in a threaded format. By that, I mean, you know, you may have some software uh, updates that you're being notified of. You may have some uh, instant messages that are coming across via empathy, uh, email, or anything you've integrated into online accounts here in GNOME. Uh, will be displayed here all in a threaded fashion. I think this is wonderful. Getting rid of this bottom panel option uh, not only looks better, but is way more functional this way and puts notifications front and center for the user where I think they should be. So for me, uh, this drastically improves uh, what we have right now in GNOME and is my favorite way that notifications have been handled ever since the very beginning of uh, the release of GNOME Shell. And so I love this. Great feature. Now, if we look at files or the old Nautilus, uh, we have some changes here. So first, first off, you see the icons have been updated. Um, a new trend right now is these flat icons. I think these look wonderful, actually. I, I wouldn't change these uh, default icons at all. If we look at the current icons, <clears throat> you'd be actually, if you look closely enough, there are some differences between these new icons and the old one. Um, they're much sharper. Um, they are visually have been upgraded and I think they look fantastic. Um, this is an icon set that I wouldn't even bother changing. I think it looks wonderful, it looks very nice. Um, so what we have here is differences in the menu options. So if we go into the most updated version of the file manager, we see this center option here, which is gonna give us this overlay menu we can change uh, list view or icon view here. We can change the size of the icons with this slider. We can change how they're sorted here by bullet. So a lot of times I do all my sorting by type. And then um, even a nice feature here where it shows uh, show hidden files um, option, which is usually a shortcut in terminal of control and H. Now you can show them very easily with this particular option here. Uh, I personally, I really like that. Um, so some of the other changes that we have are going to come in some GNOME applications. So if we go into our apps, so uh, there's going to be some, let's open up software actually. Software hasn't really received too many um, changes. So for those of you who are you know, looking for something uh, completely different in the software application, the GNOME software application. Now, if you're using a distro like Ubuntu, it's gonna have their own software center. GNOME does come with this particular software center here. Um, software centers get a lot of um, criticism. Personally, myself, uh, you know, I do think that a lot can be done with the software center, however, uh, I think software centers are really encouraged to be upgraded and offer a lot of features, particularly if you have paid software in the software center. Unless a distribution is going to be offering their own custom paid software, I don't see the software centers getting a lot of attention, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, for most Linux users, I, I don't think that this is going to be a huge problem. Uh, however, I think it's an opportunity. However, if you're a distribution that's developing your own custom applications and you want to offer maybe some upgraded versions or introduce some paid software in your particular distribution, which is I, I personally think where a lot of distros should go uh, in terms of a direction and trying to raise money for their project, 
offer quality software in an easy to use software center or app store, if you will, <clears throat> and make it front and center for your users and easy to find. Um, however, um, for me in Fedora, I almost never use the software center. Uh, I do almost everything in terminal, um, but this is the software center. If we come over to settings, you access it the same way in this particular menu. This looks very, very similar to settings here in, uh, let's see here, iteration 3.15. So you're not gonna see a lot of changes here. Uh, the layout's very similar. The layout's quite frankly almost exactly the same. So uh, if you're comfortable with where everything is and where to find it, there's not gonna be a lot that you have to do um, here in GNOME 3.16. Uh, so for me, the big improvement out of the whole iteration, the two big things, uh, one being notifications, how notifications are being handled now here, uh, right front and center for the user. You can clear notifications by um, just tapping the X next to the notification. Let's see, let's try that one more time so you guys get to see. Notification comes in, you click on the center icon here. Let's try that again. There it is. You can then click on the individual notification itself to either clear it or go deeper into the notification. Um, front and center, right where it belongs. Um, the theme is now consistent with a lot of the dark theming that you find in the newer version of GTK+. I think it's a lot easier on the eyes, much easier to read, and is much more legible on uh, screens that have a much smaller form factor, such as laptops or uh, even you may be loading this on a tablet uh, because there are ARM builds uh, of for Fedora, for example, or other distributions uh, that may be running GNOME Shell. So legibility for me is much improved. So I love the direction GNOME 3.16 is going. I think the, the little tweaks that they've made are great. Again, a lot of the stuff that's getting done in the background, we don't see visually here, but you know, I specifically am thinking of GTK Plus finally supporting OpenGL. I'm thinking of Mutter improvements for GNOME and um, just the simple UI tweaks that they're making and, and where they're, what they're doing with notifications makes a desktop uh, much more pleasant to use and things make a lot more sense. I'm of the mindset that you don't have to completely reinvent something every time you come out with an iteration. I think if you can take a fundamentally good design and tweak it, listen to user feedback, tweak it, uh, and change things that make it more usable, more enjoyable, and make changes or add things that make sense. I think that's all you really need to do. And I'm huge on you know improving the back end to make it a much more stable experience, um, so that the common everyday tasks that we that we try to accomplish are um, rock solid. I'm never wowed with a hundred new features. Uh, I want the basics of my desktop to work and to work well and to that for me as a user to know that I can count on their reliability uh, every single day. And once that's rock solid, then you can add features that make sense. Um, and I think moving those notifications and that feature almost didn't make the cut for GNOME 316 and I'm so glad it did uh, because in its current version, I, I can't stand having notifications down here at the bottom. Uh, I just don't think that the, from a design standpoint, this fits well um, with the overall design of the desktop environment. I, know I understand that the dash uses large icons, and I understand that when you come into your application drawer, we use large icons. I think this makes sense specifically because um, if you're using, say, a touch-enabled um, screen or you're on a laptop that's also uh, touch-enabled, this makes scrolling through applications and selecting applications much easier. Um, however, for notifications, I think um, it's just as easy to integrate them here um, than down here at the bottom in the bottom panel. I think just like you scale the size of icons here in your dash, I think um, down here for notifications, they should be scaled down a lot more. I think again, this just looks kind of obnoxious, but that's just my personal take on it. Um, I would like to see some more features be released for the file manager in Nautilus, but I do like how they are focusing on um, 
some UI improvements, specifically with you know these icons. Again, I think these things just look fantastic. I love the, the subtle changes that they've done uh, to the theme. And I think, again, a lot of these changes make sense and they bring um, a more enjoyable uh, experience to the fundamentals that the desktop environment provides, and I'm all for that. I don't need to be wowed with a complete, completely new desktop every time um, we have an update. And I honestly think that's where a lot of a lot of projects go wrong. They get pressured into features, and then they offer you a thousand things that may not make sense and just clutter up the user experience instead of just focusing on the fundamentals and making things and making changes that make sense. Um, we're, we're trying to wow people with a thousand new features. And I honestly think that's where Linux kind of goes, you know, very far left is we are, users expect lots and lots and lots of new features. And they have criticisms when, you know, they don't have a lot of flashy things and in, in updates. If, if somebody just focuses on the fundamentals, they tend to get a lot of flack. But I think the net GNOME should stay the course. I think they're heading in the right direction. Um, again, we're not going from GNOME... 314 to gnome 4 this is a you know an iterative iterative release we're not you know changing major versions so the expectation shouldn't be a completely new desktop it should be building upon the core functionality of the current desktop that we have gnome team two thumbs up for you i love where we're going and i like the subtle changes hope you guys like the video and this sneak peek of gnome 3.16 um for your distribution, again, I'm sure I'm going to be asked, I don't know, you know, when or if Ubuntu is going to release GNOME 3.16 uh, in uh, Ubuntu 15.04. I don't believe they are. Uh, and I know that there's a PPA that you can, there's a GNOME testing PPA where you can update to the current release of GNOME. It was always janky for me trying to do it that way. However, if you're running Arch, if you're running Gentoo, if you're running Manjaro even, uh, you'll be able to update to GNOME 3.16 shortly after it's released in those rolling distros or, of course, in the next stable release of Fedora version 22 or using Fedora Rawhide. So if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, share it, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments in the comment section below. What do you think of the new upcoming release of GNOME 3.16 and what are some things you're excited about or even features you wish they'd include? Um, leave your comments in the comment section below. And until next time, we will talk to you guys later.